the first thing you'll experience is, is probably that blast of, of warmth and, and steam and smell. The smell of that maple st steam is really uh, quite something. It's a, you know, just an exciting, inviting space that, that really gives you that sense that the, the seasons are changing and something sweet is happening. <laughs> If you've ever been to a sugar house when the sap is boiling and the maple syrup is flowing, you know exactly what Jason Lilly is talking about. It's a sensory experience like no other that tells you syrup will be ready soon and spring is on the way. I'm Ron Liznet, and it's maple syrup season on the Main Question podcast. Jason Lilly is the sustainable agriculture specialist at UMaine Cooperative Extension. He helps improve the environmental and economic sustainability of commercial farms in Maine. But I'm willing to bet that if you pressed him, his duty as the maple syrup specialist at Cooperative Extension is likely one of the favorite parts of his job. From large commercial operations tapping tens of thousands of trees to families hanging buckets in the backyard, making maple syrup is big in Maine, the third largest producer in the country. It's a practice that goes back to the very beginning of human civilization in Maine, and it's now gone high tech. So, what does it take to get that golden brown deliciousness out of the bottle onto your pancakes in the morning? Jason walks us through the whole process. We'll also take a look at how the industry is developing in Maine and what the state is doing to enhance the brand of Maine pure maple syrup. We'll even have some tips on ways to enjoy syrup that go beyond the pancakes and the waffles. If you're not hungry now, you will be after this episode of The Main Question that asks, who doesn't love real Maine maple syrup? Jason, thanks for joining us. For those unfortunate few who've never had a chance to experience it, tell us what it's like to go into a sugar shack when the boil is going on. What are the aromas? What are the tastes? What's, what's that experience like? Going into a sugar shack, you know, in February, March, early April here in Maine is, is quite an experience. The first thing you'll experience is, is probably that, that blast of, of warmth and, and steam and smell. The smell of that maple st steam is really uh, quite something. It really, you know, it's like that, that intense flavor of maple that just washes over all of your senses. So it's, it's a, you know, just an exciting, um, inviting space that, that really gives you that sense that the, the seasons are changing and something sweet is happening. <laughs> Mouth-watering for sure. So what is the history of tapping trees and producing maple syrup in Maine? How, how long ago did it start and where and how did it take place? Who, who was doing this work at the beginning? The history of, of maple syrup production and the extraction of, of maple sap uh, for the production of maple syrup and maple sugar goes back, you know, before we have records of, you know, uh, historical times. Um, so it is known that the Native American communities throughout throughout Maine and, and all of um, the northeastern part of North America were making marks into the, the maple trees, collecting that sap and boiling it down to various levels. Mostly, historically, a lot of that was taken beyond the syrup concentration of sugar and taken right into a dry sugar or a sugar cake uh, form just because it was easier to transport and it was more shelf stable. There's a very long history of production of maple syrup in this area and uh, we've come a long ways uh, to get to where we are now with the, the technology that goes into this production practice. So. Paint the picture for us if you would of the maple syrup industry here in Maine. How, how big is it? How does it compare with other states or areas of the country that produce uh, syrup and maple products? Maine maple production is the, the third largest in the U.S. Uh, we have 520 licensed producers in the state, um, and we have uh, almost 2 million taps that are on record. Um, and, that, and, and we're nearly certain that that's an underestimation. Uh, Maine is really kind of in the heart of the maple producing region, so Vermont is the the largest producer in the U.S. And then, of course, Quebec is also a very large producer. So it's very much so kind of an international cross-border industry. But it, it is a, a large industry here in the state, and it's continuing to grow. 
And you mentioned, uh, you know, it is an industry. So who, who is tapping trees in Maine? It, it ranges from big commercial operations to, uh, I know myself personally, I have two trees in my neighbor's yard I tap, and there's a lot of people that just do it as a hobby as well. Absolutely. Yeah, every year we offer several workshops specifically for folks who are boiling syrup in their backyard, and we have great attendance at those workshops. So it varies all the way from two or ten taps, just enough for your family to have some syrup, um, you know, throughout the year, all the way up to, you know, 75,000 taps uh, and larger. So there's a there's a huge diversity um, up in uh, so Somerset County in Maine is has the highest amount of production of any county in the U.S. Um, and that's where a lot of our very large production facilities are. And really throughout the whole rest of the state, there's producers from 500 to 3,000 taps um, that are at that commercial scale that are um, really you know, spread throughout the whole state. So if you would, take us through the process. What, what are the weather conditions that are needed? And, and what does it take to turn that, what just looks like water, watery sap coming out of the tree to uh, what goes on your pancakes in the morning? Sap flow starts in the springtime when we get freeze-thaw cycles. So usually uh, when we first see temperatures in the high 30s to mid 40s, that's when we're going to start seeing sap flow. So the producers keep a really close eye on the weather. And as soon as they see that in the forecast, they run out and start tapping the trees, setting up their collection systems. On a commercial scale, for the most part, we're using tubing systems. So um, it, it historically and, and currently, you know, a lot of, of home scale backyard producers will have buckets set up but to go out there you know several times throughout the year and collect a few you know a gallon or two gallons of sap from every single tree especially when you're talking about 70 75 000 taps um, that's just kind of not really practical so modern systems are all based on tubing that bring that sap um, either to a collection point or right into the the sugar house from there Oftentimes, most producers these days are using a reverse osmosis system. So that is a, a series of cylinders that are extracting pure water and leaving behind the, the sugar concentration. So that system's usually taking that sap from one and a half, two percent sugar right up to eight percent or higher. And that dramatically reduces the amount of time and fuel that it takes to, to evaporate that down to, a, to our standard maple syrup concentration, sugar concentration. So from there, it goes into an evaporator and it just gets boiled for hours. <laughs> and it takes a long time, a lot of dedication and a lot of focus. You really have to pay attention to the evaporator so that you don't have disasters that happen. From there, we're taking that, that sap and concentrating it further to a 66% sugar concentration. That's the legal definition of, of finished syrup. And then it gets jugged or you know canned, put on the counter, and that goes to, um, to our end consumer from there. The number I've heard before is 40 gallons of sap basically equals one gallon of syrup. Is that accurate? That's, that's the average um, yeah conversion rate there so think of think of that um you know if you're considering uh boiling syrup in in your own backyard definitely make sure you're doing it in the backyard and not in your kitchen because that means that you've got 39 gallons of water floating around in your house in order to get one gallon of syrup so your cabinets and your wallpaper don't think much of that <laughs> right you'd be redecorating every year i'm sure right and so just for people that aren't up on their tree physiology, what exactly is sap? And is taking all this sap out of a tree, does that affect in any negative way the tree? What's happening in the springtime is that sugars and carbohydrates that have been stored in the roots, um, that if we go back to the past season, these are sugars that were formed from photosynthesis in the leaves. Then they're transported for storage in the roots over winter. And then in the springtime, it's time for the tree to wake back up. Those sugars are sent out to the buds to give, uh, to give those buds energy to produce more leaves, to produce more sugar. 
So there's been a significant amount of research that's gone into sustainable tapping practices. And what we've um, found is that by putting only, you know, five sixteenths inch drill bit and five sixteenths inch hole in the tree and only doing so many holes per size tree that we can maintain the health of, of those trees and not slow down growth rate, not slow down just overall health in general. So, so there's been a lot of focus on maintaining the health of the woods and of the specific trees through the tapping practices and tapping standards. So the trees that are primarily used are, are sugar maples and Norway maples. Do we know why that is, why these species have this particular uh, feature about them and, and not some other species of trees? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, primarily, we're seeing sugar maples and red maples being tapped uh, here in Maine. And then we also have a few other, you know, silver maple, um, black maple, uh, Norway maple that can be tapped as well. Yeah, that's, that's a great question as to why the maples have that sugar content as, a, as compared to um, other tree species. And it's just in that physiology of the tree and, and how that works out. There are several other species of trees that can be tapped to make syrups out of. Birch is one that um, the state legislature is actually putting language in the books to also put a definition as to what birch syrup is and how it can be sold. There's a handful of producers that are starting to, to make that. Um, walnut, sycamore, um, so there are other tree species that we can use, but their sugar content is much lower and they have a very different flavor profile than our traditional maple syrup that we're used to and, and love. So those other trees, I mean, would you pour any of those syrups on your pancakes? Are they as delicious as maple syrup? They're just different or certainly not as sweet, right? So that, that sugar content should be near where maple syrup is, but that flavor profile is so different. So when I think of birch syrup, I think of marinades and salad dressings and, you know, that more of that savory side of things because of this kind of like acidic, astringent uh, quality to it. Yeah, kind of to each their own. They definitely all have different flavor profiles. Also, the the, the sugar content of the sap coming out of those trees and the seasonality, um, usually the yields are a lot lower and the season is, is later um, to, to pr produce syrup from those trees. Beyond the obvious, which is that maple syrup is absolutely delicious, a lot of people are just plain interested in, in maple syrup. Why do you think that is? And what are the most asked questions you get about maple syrup and producing maple syrup? I think that it's just a, a connection to to nature and to the woods here in Maine and also the, the seasonality of it. The fact that, you know, we've all been holed up and, and uh, you know, we've, we made it through the, the cold Maine winter for the most part. And, and, you know, we, this is an opportunity to, to gather around the sugar house and to smell those sweet smells and to just experience like, what is it that we can extract right from the woods, put, you know, just boil it down and put it in a jug and have such a, a sweet, you know, enjoyable product. Um, so I think that that's part of why, you know, the the turnout at events like Maine Maple Sunday is so high and why the community is so supportive of this industry. The The community has been doing a, a, a great job to support the industry. And I think that um, there's really a lot of potential growth and um and ways that, you know, we can really uh, continue to expand on, on Maine maple syrup. Because of the environment, may, maple, maple trees are primarily grown and exist here in the Northeast and in Eastern Canada. Are there other places around the country? And are there, uh, is there interest growing around the world for maple syrup? It probably was just a regional product for, for a long time, right? Absolutely. So there are a lot of research projects that just launched in the last few years about tapping um, other species of maple. So in you know Washington State and the Northwest, there's big leaf maple. Again, has very different flavor uh, characteristics, but is is you know has a potential to be a marketable item. And we work with producers as far south as as West Virginia, um, who are also 
making maple syrup from mostly red maples. The market is pretty rapidly expanding and there are some some major packers and distributors and um, associations that are in place to support the maple industry who are reaching out to markets in in Asia and Europe and um, are really seeing exponential growth in these international markets as well as you know other regions of the US so there's definitely some some work targeting you know the Southwest California some of that's happening from the maple packers that are buying bulk syrup repacking it and distributing it and some of that's um, happening through the mail order sales that are that our main producers are just shipping product directly to the west coast and, and other areas so but there's still a lot of room and potential for growth there now, if you ask most people around the country what uh, they thought about maple syrup or where it comes from, I'm sure Vermont would be top of mind for them. But what about Maine in terms of, I've heard before that a lot of maple syrup produced in Maine goes just to wholesale, and so it's not a retail type of situation. And Is that changing? It is work being done. What is the Maine brand around maple syrup, and is that uh, potentially going to develop? Maine Maple Sunday has been uh, a critical tool and event to really expand that brand with our local markets. So we get uh, a lot of, you know, resident Mainers who, who go out and support their local um, sh- uh, sugar houses. But we also see a huge number of out-of-staters who will come up just for that weekend to, to visit sugar houses um, on that, um, during that event. So, um, we're really starting to, to see that brand recognition and the main Maple Producers Association was recently awarded a very large grant to, to continue to push that work. Historically, that has, those funds have been used to promote Maine Maple Sunday and maybe do a few uh, promotions like down into the New Hampshire, Boston area. This grant cycle is going to help the association to push that that branding further out and to and to really put that main pure maple syrup logo out in front of more people so that's going to stretch out to other regions but it's also going to help the association and the producers to connect with main based businesses and institutions including our chain uh, or our larger grocery store outlets so, you know, we're also hoping that, you know, through these efforts that um, Maine consumers will stop when they're, when they're looking for maple syrup, whether that's at a sugar house, but especially, you know, at the grocery store and take that extra second to flip the jug around and say, where was this packed or produced? And hopefully we're going to see that Maine Pure maple syrup logo and the real main logo, which is a promotion of the Department of Ag Conservation and Forestry, and and you know be willing to choose that jug of syrup over one that's packaged from another state, and that's you know hopefully people will start to see that there's a really large impact of the the main maple industry and the supporting these local businesses will just uh, compound on that that positive impact. So that's the, the slogan or the name, Maine Pure Maple Syrup. That's what's to look for. That That's what you look for. Yep. Good to know. Well, so I, I can't think of many podcast episodes we've done that involve the natural world in some way that we haven't brought up the subject of climate change, changes in the natural world, uh, and I imagine that is uh, a factor here as well. So is climate change having an impact on maple trees or maple syrup production, where it happens, how it happens, and is it changing the amount of production or, or having a negative effect? Absolutely. You think of this system that, you know, with our with our annual crop production, we can tweak certain variables, we can bring water, we can change fertility rates, we can improve soil quality. And this is a, a very, you know, natural system that has pretty minimal impacts or buffers from, you know, human interaction. So as we have more extreme weather events and we have drought, 
that can affect the, the sugar concentration of our sap several years down the road. Um, there's quite a bit of data um, showing the change in the seasons. So this, especially for our further su southern states that um, are in the maple producing region. So just as an example, in Massachusetts from 1965 to 2010, they have seen that the season has changed to seven days earlier and that it's eight days shorter over that window. So that's a lot of opportunity for sap runs that they're missing out uh, on because of that consistent change. Luckily, being a little further north here in Maine, we've seen a 4.8 days earlier and two day shortage in the season. So we've got a little bit of buffer, but that is the trajectory that we're, we're bracing for on um, the changes that we're gonna see due to the changes in the climate. Well, you do your work through cooperative extension what is being done through Cooperative Extension to help people and companies in this business or people that do it for a hobby? We stay pretty busy throughout the year. So this time of year, um, you know, December through February, we offer about four to five workshops for, for backyard producers. Um, and we do everything right from identifying the trees to canning and grading the syrup. So that's really, um, you know, training for for backyard folks. We offer programs like business management. So, you know, this is a business and while it's enjoyable and most people get into it because of family tradition and just the love of, of producing syrup, we have to keep that financial viability in mind. Um, so we, we offer a lot of business planning and business management workshops. One of the, the major programs that we focus on uh, throughout the maple producing region is that UMaine, in cooperation with the University of Maine, offer the Maple Grading School. So we work with established producers to um, just make sure that they're aware of all the factors that go into quality control for maple syrup. And we're trying to maintain that high quality and high um, output of maple syrup in the industry. And we also collaborate closely with the School of Forest Resources. We're working with them on their research projects related to climate impacts, uh, related to general sugar bush management, as far as optimal thinning, optimal, you know, maintaining tree health, trying to take that research that's being done by that group and making sure that that, that is being transferred to the producers in an efficient and clear way. For people that uh, maybe listening here and say, boy, I want to, I got some maple trees out back. I want to, I want to give this a shot. What would you tell them about how to get started, uh, what th they need for equipment or rookie mistakes to avoid so they can actually make some syrup? I'd say the first step is to visit the Humane Extension Maple webpage. We have webinars and recordings and all sorts of resources on that page on the, the basics that you need to get started. Next, I'd say to connect with a local sugar maker. So the maple industry in Maine is really, a, you know, a friendly group of folks that are open to, to helping um, others learn. So um, connecting with your local sugar maker and connecting with me at the Cooperative Extension Office, always happy to talk you through the process. There's just a, a lot of good resources out there. We also have some good uh, maple equipment dealers throughout the state that can help you get set up with all the basic equipment that you need. Some of the issues that we see folks running into is just not having an efficient heat source. So it can take a long time to boil if you've got, you know, don't have good surface area and you're not keeping that really heated at a, at a constant boil. So we wanna avoid that. I want to make sure you've got a correct density so a candy thermometer can help it can be a really important tool there and um, also just being careful what that sap comes into contact with it's really uh, easy to have some off flavors some really kind of funny tasting syrup so just be really careful with with how you're storing it and how you're you're boiling it what you're putting in that syrup through the process um, to make sure you have a good good quality product obviously the way most people consume maple syrup is uh, in the morning on their pancakes or waffles. But uh, do you have any favorite ways to enjoy maple syrup beyond that? Uh, you 
you care to share any secret sauces or recipes or anything? Yeah, I'll try to pick out, you know, my, my top favorites. I would say maple glazed Brussels sprouts. Oh. And you yeah. might as well throw a little bacon in there too, but that, that sweetness is just really nice how that glazes and caramelizes as you as you roast those Brussels. And uh, one of our go-tos for, for most meals is a maple mustard balsamic dressing. So really uh, taking it over into the savory side, but just that that caramelization, the maple flavor, and the sweetness can really bring a lot out um, in, you know, vegetable roast, salad dressings, meat marinades. So I, it's it's amazing the, the number of ways that we can can use maple beyond uh, beyond the pancakes. I should have thought ahead and had you bring some samples if, uh, if we were doing this uh, together here, but, uh, well, maybe next time. Yeah, right. <laughs> so finally, as you look out into the future, what do you, what do you think the future holds? Is this going to become a bigger industry? Will this thrive into the future? There are challenges, as we've discussed, but uh, where do you see this all heading? Maple is an industry that is on a growth trajectory, and it's continuing to grow. The technology that goes into production of syrup has been growing very quickly, uh, which has allowed for increased sap yields and increased increased efficiency in production in, in syrup. So um, it's this constant uh, kind of balancing act between the production of syrup and the marketing of syrup. And I think that we're leaning towards that kind of getting creative when it comes to marketing strategies, the marketing outlets, um, and some brand recognition as well. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity for the industry. And I also just hope that kind of the, the main consumer of, of uh, Maine maple syrup will, will take that extra step to make, you know, identify Maine made syrup and, uh, and make that part of their regular, you know, shopping habits. Well, thanks for visiting with us. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm hungry. So I'm going to go take care of that once we're done here. Sounds great, Ron. Yeah, make sure you put some extra syrup on it. All right, will do. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to find out more about Maine maple syrup and give it a try in your own backyard, or even if you're just curious about the whole process, head to extension.umaine.edu and search for the maple syrup production page. All episodes of The Main Question, even the ones less delicious than this one, can be found on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, UMaine's Facebook and YouTube pages, as well as Amazon and Audible. Questions or comments? Send us a note at mainquestion at maine.edu. I'm Ron Lisnett. We'll catch you next time on The Main Question. <laughs>